If you're in your 40s, you need to know the difference between training and testing. So let me give you a scenario. You just rocked up to the gym. You have no real clear idea of what you're going to do today. So you have a look around and you see some guys loading up their bench press. They've got an Olympic bar and they stick two plates on either side. So uh, in translation, that's 20 kilos a pop times four plus the bar. That equals 100 kilos. Then they proceed to knock out some horrific reps that look like a combination between a uh, contortionist yoga pose and a decline press, decline bench press. So what's that going to achieve? Well, e honestly, fuck all. It is a test of someone's sheer determination to prove to everybody else that they can move some weight in the gym in a specific manner. And how's that going to serve you? So, what is the difference between training and testing and why is it so important? Well, if you continue to train like that in your 40s, somewhere down the line, that is going to get you injured. It's not going to train the muscles you think you're training. And it's also going to lend itself uh, to a lower back injury somewhere down the line. So, training. I'm showing some videos of myself doing some pull-ups with five kilos around my waist, which I would consider training. I can do between eight and 10 reps of that exercise, feel my back working, contract my lat muscles, squeeze my shoulder blades together, all the things that are going to contribute to me getting stronger uh, in that particular movement and getting a stronger back and being able to develop those muscles if I so wish. Now, on the other hand, I can show a video where I am knocking out some reps with 20 kilos attached around my waist. And what is that going to prove? Well, that's going to give me a snapshot of where I am right now. So it's a test um, where the reps get lowered. I still try to maintain the same form and function of the exercise but it is a test. It shows me where I'm at right now, shows me if the training has produced any results, and it is uh, not to be done on a frequent basis. So there are many reasons why you shouldn't train at your maximum limits all the time. Every week, every day you go to the gym, it's just gonna lead to injuries. And uh, if you look at the people who do use limit weights or train at maximum intensity, uh, for example, sprinters or weightlifters, they use their maximum poundages to make an impression during their meetings, during the competition phase. That's when they lift the most weight or sprint the fastest. All, all the rest of the time, it's irrelevant. Um, and for you, in your 40s, it's just going to lead to disappointment uh, and injury, chronic fatigue, uh, it places undue amounts of stress on your immune system, so you may find yourself getting ill more frequently. What you should be doing is trying to find the minimum effective dose. Uh, sounds very scientific. What does that mean? You should be finding out how little it takes to give you the training effect. So rather than going to the gym and training yourself uh, to up your capacity so that you can do more training and spend more hours in the gym and train harder and faster and longer. Uh, unless you're an athlete, that is not going to serve you very well. So what you should be searching for is the minimum amount of time you need to be spending in the gym that's going to produce the maximum uh, or produce a training effect. Like getting a tan. If you're sitting out in the sun and 15 minutes stimulates your, uh, is it melanin? to give you a tan any longer than that is just a waste of time. You're just frying your skin. Uh, and actually what you're doing is being counterproductive because when you're burnt, you can't go out and uh, continue the tanning process. So you gotta sit inside and uh, let your pale complexion, um, pale in comparison to your more tanned friends who did it more sensibly and went along the lines of using the minimum amount of time that they need to spend in the sun to their advantage. So that's my take on training versus testing and why you in your 40s need to be paying a bit more attention to it.